हेलो एवरीवन आई एम संतोष के जी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग एम मैसूर इन टूडेज क्लास वी विल डिस्कस रिगार्डिंग द यूनिट मैकेनिकल पावर ट्रांसमिशन व्हिच कम्स अंडर मॉड्यूल फोर ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट एलिमेंट्स ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग which you are going to learn in either first semester or in second semester it is having the subject code be ye 103 or 203 if you are studying this subject in first semester then the subject code will be be me 103 and if you are studying the same subject in second semester then the code will be b e m e 203 now let us go to the unit gear drives so if you look at the term gear drives it consisting of two words one is gear and another one is drives so first let us try to understand what is the definition of the drives so what is a drive so drives they are defined as a transmission systems which are used to transmit the mechanical power between one machine element to another by means of rotary motion the drives the mechanical drives they are classified into different types so the various mechanical drives we have are one is the rope drives second one is the belt drives and the next one is chain drives and the last one is gear drives so these drives are used to transmit the motion and power so the motion here it will be transmitted in the form of rotary motion so when one shaft rotates the other shaft will also rotate so in order to rotate the second shaft with the help of the first shaft we will be using these drives so here normally the machine elements which we consider in order to transmit the motion as well as power is a shaft so what is a shaft so generally if you look at the shape of the shaft it looks like a cylindrical rod so shaft is nothing but a cylindrical rod and these shafts will be used whenever i need to transmit the motion from one place where the motion is available to the other place where we require motion suppose let us say if i keep the two shafts at certain distance so the distance between these two shaft is termed as center distance so when the center distance between the two shafts is very large let us say which is greater than 10 meters so in such cases to rotate the second shaft with the help of the first shaft the type of drives we can use is the rope drives so if you connect these two shaft with the help of a pulley and these two pulley if they are connected by means of a rope then when you rotate the shaft one the pulley placed on the shaft one it will also going to rotate so when the pulley rotates the rope which is passed over the pulley it will start move so when this pulley moves over the pulley which is placed on the second shaft so this pulley again it is connected to the shaft 2 because of which the shaft 2 will undergo the motion and thereby the rotary motion will get transmitted from shaft 1 to shaft 2 and when we keep the two shafts when we keep the two shafts at moderate distance let us say it is less than 10 meters usually it will be less than 5 meters usually it will be less than 5 meters now if i need to transmit the rotary motion from the shaft 1 to the shaft 2 here the center distance is moderate 
so here i can make use of the bell drives so what i can do is on the shaft one i can place or connect a pulley i can connect a pulley and on the shaft two i can connect one more pulley so this is pulley one and this is pulley two so over these two pulley i can pass a belt which is made up of certain flexible material now what i will do i will rotate the shaft one so when shaft one rotates the pulley which is connected to shaft one that is pulley one it is also going to rotate so when pulley one rotates it starts to move the belt it is going to pull the belt at one end and it is going to push the belt at other end so this portion of the belt which get pushed by the pulley one it's start to rotate the pulley two so when pulley two rotates since it is connected to the shaft two the shaft two is also going to rotate and thereby the motion gets transmitted from shaft one to shaft two with the help of belt drives similarly when there is a moderate distance instead of belt drives we can also make use of chain drives so what is the difference between belt and chain drive is whenever we need to transmit more power whenever we need to transmit more power then we can go for chain drive and when the distance between the two shafts is moderate and if you want to transmit a moderate amount of power or less amount of power then we can go for belt drives then we will see what is the meaning of gear drives so normally the gear drives are used whenever we need to transmit the motion between the two shafts between the two shafts which are placed at very less distance so it will be normally less than a meter it will be normally less than a meter so whenever the shafts are this much smaller distance then to transmit the power between these two we will make use of the drive which is called as a gear drive so here on pulley 1 we are going to place one gear and on pulley 2 we are going to place the second gear so when you rotate the shaft 1 the gear 1 going to rotate when gear 1 rotates the gear 2 is going to rotate with the help of gear 2 the shaft 2 is also going to rotate so this is how we can make use of the various drives in order to transmit the motion between the machine elements normally shafts now we will come to see what is the definition of gear so we have seen the definition of drives so what is a drive a drive is nothing but a transmission system that can be used in order to transmit the power and motion from one shaft to another which are placed at certain distance now let us see define the term gear so what is a gear so to define the gear we will be taking the help of the gear itself so if you look at the geometry of the gear if you look at the geometry of the gear so how does it looks it looks like a wheel it looks like a wheel and upon the wheel upon the wheel we are having certain projections like this certain projections like this so these projections they are technically termed as teeth they are technically termed as teeth therefore we can define the gear therefore we can define the gear as a wheel as a wheel with teeth with teeth or the gear is also called as toothed wheel toothed wheel which are used in order to transmit the motion from one shaft to another which are placed at very less distance which are placed at very less distance now we have seen the definition of gears and the definition of drives now what do you mean by gear drive so gear drive is nothing but it is a toothed wheel a pair of toothed wheels which can be used to transmit the motion and power between the two shafts which are placed at less distance less center distance 
now let us see the different types of gears so based on the geometrical shape based on the geometrical shape we can classify the gears into following five types so what are the different types of gears we have the first common type of gear we see is a spur gear the second type of gear we have is an helical gear the next type of gear we have is a bevel gear and the next type of gear is worm gear and the last type of gear is called rack and pinion gear so what is now let us see what is a spur gear what is helical gear what is bevel gear what is worm gear and what is rack and pinion one by one so first let us see what is a spur gear so spur gear is the gear which you are seeing now so in the front view in the front view it looks like a wheel it looks like a wheel with the projections with the projections like this so these projections are called teeth similarly if you see the gear from the side from the side so the gear will look like a rectangle the gear will look like a rectangle like this and in the gear at the center we are having a hole we are having a hole in which we are going to pass a shaft which we are going to pass a shaft so the shaft in the side view it looks like this in the side view it looks like this and if you look at the gear teeth if you look at the gear teeth here we can see that uh, when you rotate the gear or this is the shaft so this is the axis of the shaft and this is the axis of shaft so when you rotate the gear the gear is going to rotate about the shaft axis and now if you see the position of the teeth if you see the position of the teeth so how the teeth are cut in the gear is so the teeth they are cut in such a manner the teeth are cut in such a manner that they are parallel to axis of rotation so here you can see that the axis of rotation the axis of rotation is horizontal the axis of rotation is horizontal and the teeth and the teeth they are also cut the teeth they are also cut in horizontal position so this is teeth one and if you look at this teeth so this teeth it is also cut parallel to the axis of rotation so how we can define a spur gear so spur gear can be defined as a gear a spur gear is defined as a gear where where the teeth where the teeth are cut where the teeth are cut on the cylindrical surface on the cylindrical surface in which direction in the direction in the direction which is which is parallel which is parallel to axis of rotation which is parallel to axis of rotation so in a spur gear or what is a spur gear means so spur gear is nothing but a cylindrical surface a cylindrical surface upon which the teeth are cut upon which the teeth are cut parallel to axis of rotation now let us see the helical gears so what are helical gears the helical gears they are similar to spur gears means here also the teeth the teeth it will be cut on the cylindrical surface in the helical gear also we are going to cut the teeth on the 
cylindrical surface so if you look the cylindrical surface it is looking like this. if i write the diagram if i write the diagram of a cylindrical surface the front view the front view of a cylinder looks like a rectangle and when you see the cylinder from the side it's look like a circle so on this cylindrical surface if i cut the teeth if i cut the teeth like this so here what i am doing is i am cutting the teeth in such a way that in such a way that the teeth the teeth are inclined at certain angle they are inclined at certain angle to the axis of rotation so helical gear so how we can define helical gear so helical gear are defined as a gear where the teeth where the teeth are cut at certain angle at certain angle on a cylindrical surface on a cylindrical surface so this angle of inclination this angle of inclination of the teeth with axis of rotation this angle of inclination of teeth with axis of rotation is called as helix angle it is called as helix angle and similar to the spur gears similar to the spur gears these helical gears these helical gears are also used to transmit the motion as well as the power between the two shafts between the two shafts which are kept parallel to one another which are kept parallel to one another so what we can understand here is the spur gears and helical gears will be used to transmit the power between the two shafts which are kept parallel which are kept parallel and whenever the two shafts are parallel then obviously their axis will never intersect their axis will never intersect so what we say is the spur and helical gears both will be used to transmit the power between the shafts which are parallel to one another and also non intersecting and also non intersecting so what is the difference between spur gear and helical gear is while transmitting the power while transmitting the power at high speeds at high speed usually the spur gears the spur gears they make more noise they make more noise so this noise can be avoided this noise can be avoided if we make use of helical gears at higher speeds so whenever we require to rotate the shafts at higher speed and the amount of noise should be very less in such cases we can go for helical gears instead of spur gears the next type of gear we have is a bevel gear so in spur gears in spur gears the teeth the teeth they are cut on cylindrical surface they are cut on the cylindrical surface and in helical gears in helical gear also we are going to cut the teeth on the cylindrical surface but in case of spur gears the teeth are cut parallel parallel to axis of rotation whereas in helical gear the teeth will be cut at certain angle at certain angle to the axis of rotation now in case of bevel gear so in case of bevel gear instead of using or instead of cutting the teeth on cylindrical surface the ear the teeth will be cut on a truncated cone it will be cut on a truncated cone and the teeth will be cut the straight teeth will be cut on this truncated cone so whenever we are going to cut the straight teeth whenever we are going to cut the straight teeth 
on on a truncated cone the resulting gear we are going to call it as a bevel gear so the first point you should remember in bevel gear is here the straight teeth the straight teeth are cut are cut on which kind of surface truncated cone on a truncated cone so where we use the bevel gear so the next question is where we are going to use the bevel gear so normally we use the bevel gear to transmit the motion to transmit the motion and power and power between the shafts between two shafts between the shafts which are intersecting between the two shafts whose axis whose axis are intersecting whose axis are intersecting suppose let us say i am having one shaft which is kept horizontal one shaft which is kept horizontal and i have one more shaft i have one more shaft which is kept vertical like this which is kept vertical like this now with the help of this horizontal shaft i should rotate this vertical shaft so to transfer the motion from the horizontal shaft to the vertical shaft we use the bevel gear so i am going to connect one gear on this vertical shaft and i am going to connect one more gear one more bevel gear on this horizontal shaft now if you rotate the horizontal shaft this bevel gear is going to rotate so when this bevel gear rotates the bevel gear connected to the vertical shaft it is going to rotate when this bevel gear rotates the vertical shaft it is also going to rotate now here if i extend the axis of these two shaft they are intersecting they are intersecting therefore what we say is the bevel gears they are used to transmit the motion and power between the shafts which are kept in such a way that their axis when extended they are going to meet at a point so here the angle of intersection it may need not to be 90 so the angle of intersection between the two shafts which are kept it may be less than 90 it may be less than 90 like this so if it is less than 90 in order to transmit the motion between these two shafts we will be making use of the bevel gears which are called as acute angle bevel gears acute angle bevel gears and to transmit the motion between the shafts whose axis they are intersecting at 90 degrees we will be using the gears which are called as right angle bevel gears which are called as right angle bevel gears similarly we can make use of the bevel gears in order to transmit the motion between the two shafts whose axis are intersecting at an angle which is greater than 90 degrees which are greater than 90 degrees so the bevel gear which is used to transmit the motion between these two shafts they are called as obtuse angle bevel gears obtuse angle bevel gears so the bevel gears they are used to transmit the motion between the two shafts which are whose axis are intersecting so whenever the axis are intersecting it means that these two shafts they are non parallel they are non parallel and they are intersecting axis and they have intersecting axis the next type of gear is the worm gear so 
what is a warm gear so normally the warm gear it will be consisting of two gears so one gear is either a spur gear either a spur gear or an helical gear either a spur gear or helical gear and the other gear and the other gear is in the form of a screw which is threaded threaded screw so here what happens is when you rotate the spur gear or helical gear which is in contact with the thread threaded screw so this screw is going to rotate so when the threaded screw rotates it's look like the worm which look like the worm which is moving so as a result this gear is called as a warm gears so warm gears will be consisting of two gears so out of which one gear will be either a spur gear or helical gear spur gear or helical gear and other gear is a is in the form of a screw is in the form of a screw or we can say that it is a cylindrical surface upon which the threads are cut so when this member rotates it looks like a worm so the total drive is called as a worm gear drive so here these gears where we use is so if you take the shaft and if you connect to this spur gear if you connect this to spur gear so the axis of the shaft it will be perpendicular to the board whereas the axis of this shaft it is horizontal so one axis it is horizontal and other axis it is perpendicular to the board it means the angle between these two the angle between these two will be 90 degree and if you look at these two axes they are never going to intersect so if i extend the axis of this it will be extended either away from the board or it will be going behind the board whereas if you extend the axis of this threaded member it will be extended either towards right side or it will be extended towards left side and they are never going to intersect so we we use the bevel gear is so we can say that the bevel gear they are used to transmit the power between the two shafts the two shafts which are not parallel which are non parallel and non intersecting whenever we need to reduce the speed which is available to very large extent to very large extent there we can go for warm gear this is one of the application so warm gear are used where we need to reduce the speed of the gear by larger amount that is the one application the second application they can be used to transmit the motion between the two shafts which are kept in such a way that they are non parallel to one another and their axis will never intersect so in these two cases we can make use of the gear which are called as warm gear then we will come for rack and pinion so rack and pinion where we are going to use or what is a rack and pinion and tell or if you want to know what is a rack and pinion so the pinion is nothing but the pinion is nothing but a spur gear a small spur gear a small spur gear or helical gear it is a small spur gear or helical gear and a rack a rack is nothing but a straight bar it is a straight bar on which the teeth on which the teeth are cut perpendicular on which the teeth are cut perpendicular to the axis of rotation the teeth are cut perpendicular to the axis of rotation so here why we are calling these two why we are calling rack why we are calling rack as a gear is we can imagine that this rack this rack is a portion of is a portion of a large spur gear a large spur gear so compared to the size of this large spur gear this pinion size is less therefore the 
pinion the gear which is having lesser size is called as pinion and this rack is the can be assumed this rack can be assumed as a large spur gear and where we can use this spur gears or where we can use this rack and pinion is whenever we need to convert whenever we need to convert the rotary motion whenever we need to convert the rotary motion of the gear into the reciprocating motion reciprocating motion in such cases we can make use of this type of gears that is rack and pinion let us summarize what we have studied so far so so far we studied the definition of the drives then we defined what is a gear then we defined what is a gear drive and we come across what are the different types of drives we are having and where they are used and then we studied the definition of the gear and then we studied the different types of gears so the different types of gears we are having are one is the spur gear the second one is the helical gear helical gear the next gear we have is bevel gear the next gear is warm gear and the last gear is rack and pinion rack and pinion so in spur gear we are going to cut the teeth on cylindrical surface the teeth will be cut on cylindrical surface and the teeth will be parallel to axis of rotation parallel to be axis of rotation and this spur gears they are used in order to transmit the motion and power between the shafts which are kept parallel and whose axis are non intersecting whose axis are non intersecting similar to the spur gear the bever gear is also used to cut they are used to transmit the power between the parallel and non intersecting shafts the only difference between the spur gear and helical gear is in helical gear we are going to cut the teeth the teeth at certain angle the teeth at certain angle to axis of rotation on a cylindrical member and if you come to the bevel gear so in bevel gear the teeth the straight teeth they will be cut on a frustum of a cone so on the frustum of cone if you are cutting the straight teeth then the resulting gear we are going to call it as a bevel gear this bevel gear they are used to transmit the motion between the two shafts which are non parallel which are non parallel whereas the axis their axis is intersecting their axis is intersecting the warm gears are used to transmit the power between the non parallel non parallel and non intersecting shafts non intersecting shafts the rack and pinion where we use the rack and pinion the rack and pinion is used wherever we need to convert we need to convert the rotary motion the rotary motion into linear reciprocating linear reciprocating motion in such cases we will be using the rack and pinion whereas in other four cases only the rotary motion will get transmitted from one shaft to another but in last case here the rotary motion will be converted into linear reciprocating motion or we can convert the linear reciprocating motion into a rotary motion so this is regarding the brief introduction regarding gates